Welcome to the final episode of season one of Small Girl Big Talk. Yep, I have decided that with the holiday season coming up and with December and January being the busiest season in my life because it's Christmas time, it is Kevin's birthday, it is my birthday and with Chinese New Year coming up as well, there's just a lot going on. And this is a season where I will be busy with spring cleaning in my house and Marie condoing my wardrobe. And there's just a lot of things going on. So I'm going to take a break over here with the hopes that, you know, while I am able to focus with all these things, I would be able to come back stronger and bring you a better podcast and better content in the next season, which I'm hoping to come back sometime in January or February. I'm not going to take too long off a break, so you don't need to worry about missing me too much. If you do, just make sure you follow me on Instagram at smallgirlbigtalk or at my personal account at Wendy Vuzzy to stay updated with what I share and I would probably be sharing like snippets from all these podcast episodes in the past so that you can continue to listen to my message or the things that I have to say with you. But in today's episode, as we are wrapping up the year, I really want to dedicate this episode to discuss and share with you what 2023 has been for me and what I've achieved and what I've learned in this year before we get into the holiday mode and the holiday season. So, at the start of the year, I usually like to come up with a word of the year that I would use as my intention. And for 2023, the word that I have chosen is RISE. R-I-S-E, RISE. And indeed, 2023 has really been a year of growth and expansion for myself because back in 2022, last year, it was the year that I really learned to take a step back. I actually went on part-time arrangement with my day job and I learned to detach my values from money and the need for validation through my career success and to just learn and experience life again. But this year, in 2023, what I had to learn is to really incorporate my drive for career and financial growth into the life that I have built last year. Because let's face it, we got to be honest with ourselves, right? That unless you are a trust fund baby, unless you have really strong financial backing from your family or your partner, chances are you still need money to get by. You still need money to live that life of your dream. Whether or not you are someone who craves luxury or you just want a simple life, you still need money to live that simple life that you want. So this year is the year that I really learned that on top of truly living, on top of experiencing life as it is, how can I incorporate financial and career growth on it so that I can sustain the life that I want? And I would say that at the start of the year, I kind of coined the term slow hustle. And that is how I have been approaching life so far. By slow hustle, what it means is you got to hustle for the dreams that you want. You have to work hard for it, but that doesn't mean that you have to be in a very toxic style of living where you just dedicate your entire life to hustling. You can still hustle slowly without forgetting the essence of living, of taking rest in between so that you have the space to breathe and to think better, to still make time for it things that truly matter in your life, like your family and the relationships that you have, to have fun in life. I truly believe that that is something that can be achieved in life and that is how life should be about. And 2023 was truly the year that is all about that. I felt like I've created a very nice space for myself to breathe and live in 2022. And in 2023, I really expanded that space while incorporating career and financial growth in it. So at the start of this year, 
as per the habit from my previous years and honestly it's just what we've been told through the masculine ways of working all our life is that I did also set smart goals um, for myself in terms of what I want to achieve this year and I only had four New Year's resolution this year and out of the four number one I actually just struck that goal out of my list when I cancelled my plan to visit my BFF at Amsterdam and Cologne because I decided that I really had to do the adult thing and make the wise decision in terms of my financial planning. So goal number one was stroke off, but because of that, I was actually able to check my other goal, which is to pay off my credit card debt and to start building my wedding fund. I am really proud and excited for myself in achieving that because I was on credit card debt for over a year prior to this and I am just glad that I'm able to build that financial foundation this year and it's only going up from here. And number three, another goal that I was able to check off on my list is that I was able to remain in the flow space that I created in 2022. And what that means is I was able to maintain my habit of having daily meditation and also to work out two to three times in a week. I'm really glad that I was able to maintain that habit. And lastly, I really wanted to make a certain amount of money by the end of the year and become a full-time content creator. And while I was financially not there, like I didn't fully achieve the number that I set for, I honestly think that I've kind of built the foundation this year to be halfway there. So it's kind of like a 0.5 status over there where it's not that I didn't achieve it, but I'm just not at that level that I want it to be. So it's safe to say that out of the four goals that I initially set early this year, I was able to check 2.5 out of it. And I like to think that it is a big win and I'm quite proud of it. But what I want to say is goal setting aside, what I think truly helps me to achieve these goals this year is truly the embodiment of the identity of who I want to be. Instead of just focusing on the end goal, which sometimes may feel really far and unattainable, I meditated and manifested the person that I want to become, who has the personality and the mindset to achieve what I want in my end goal. This is something that I read up a lot about in books about manifestations and basically attracting the thing that you want. And through practice of my daily meditation and visualization, I feel like I am really slowly becoming a content creator regardless of my current reality. And I want to share with you one of the mindset shifts that I was able to achieve during this season. Yes, at this moment, I am still having a day job and I really still need the salary to give me the financial security for the commitments that I have. That is my reality. But instead of thinking that I can only be a content creator and nothing else, instead of thinking that the only way for me to succeed as a content creator is to quit my job and to do it full time, I learned that I can have two or three or four job titles and income streams at a time. Just like how Elon Musk is not just the CEO of Tesla, but also SpaceX or X.com. When I embody the successful CEO or entrepreneur content creator that I really want to be, when I start to becoming her instead, I start to be able to see the big picture instead of being stuck in this narrow view of life that I used to tie myself onto. Another area that I grew a lot this year is my spiritual growth. As someone who was raised and baptized as a Catholic since I was a baby, 
And as someone who is still visiting an evangelical Christian church today, you would think that my spiritual growth is through reading the Bible or going to church. But this year was really the year that I took a step back to face the questions that I've always had at the back of my head about my religion. And as I look outwards of the church to study what is out there, you know, I read up about manifestation. I read up about the signs of our origins and quantum physics. I was exposed to different school of thoughts and even explored things like astrology or tarot reading. And let me tell you, these are things that as I was growing up, I was told that these are evil things that that I was not supposed to touch on or believe in because I would be committing sins. And I'm going to be honest, even as I'm talking about it right now, I still feel a little bit scared that members of the church would judge me and condemn me. But here's the thing. Sometimes it takes being outside of a relationship for you to observe what you've always had in a relationship. And as a curious being myself, I really needed to understand what is out there or the scientific facts for me to be able to understand God and what is it that He wants for me or what is it that He is trying to tell me. This has been a very personal journey that I haven't really been able to open up completely here on my podcast or online in general because I honestly don't know where to start as I'm still in the process of figuring it all out. But maybe one day when I feel like I'm more confident to talk about it, I might cover it in my podcast one day. But what I can say now is expanding my knowledge and reading up more about the science behind meditation or manifestation has allowed me to learn about self-acceptance and the art of letting go, to really surrender to God and to be gentler on myself in all that I am doing in my life, to truly experience life as a human being And this is a growth I experienced this year that I don't take lightly. And that is why I am sharing it with you right now. But having said that, when you want to pursue so much in life, there are bound to be some setbacks that we need to learn to do with it. This year, I literally went from part-time to full-time in my day job. And I started a podcast and I started to create more consistent content on social media, which basically means that my time awake has went from 40% being occupied to like 85 or 88% being occupied. And that means that I really needed to optimize my work to maximize my output and to still make time for relationships or my health or the things that I care about. So this year, I had to learn to put in more effort on my relationship with Kevin again after kind of taking it for granted because I was just too busy focusing on other things. I learned to build a stronger foundation for my personal finance before even dreaming so big to make more in the future. I had to learn to let go of friendship that was toxic for me, even though we've been friends forever and I still love her, but sometimes you just need to let go. I also learned that after all the growing up that we've been doing, We are still a kid inside that would do stupid, questionable things at 30 years old. I wouldn't share them here because I was kind of warned that podcast is evergreen and you never know what will come back to you in the future. But all I can say, or I guess what I'm trying to say is that, isn't this just life? And isn't life just meant to be experienced? So let's leave 
the judging for God when we die and just focus on living today, whether it's the setbacks that we're experiencing or the fun that we're having or the questionable things that we are doing, let's not be too harsh on ourselves. And as we approach the end of the year and get into the holiday season, I also want to take this chance to remind you to take things easy and to be gentle on yourself. Because as much as I love Christmas holidays, a 2015 survey that is conducted by Healthline has also shown that 62% of people find that during the holiday season, their stress level is actually very or somewhat elevated. And only 10% of people reported that they experienced no stress at all during this season. And the common reasons for stress during the holidays are like the financial demands during the season, which is understandable. Like there are so many gifts and traveling that needs to be done, right? And also like dynamics of spending time with your family or being out of routine from what you usually do like maintaining your personal health habits and stuff like that. And so I want to remind you that if you are feeling more stressed up than experiencing joy this holiday season, I hope that you cannot be so harsh on yourself because literally only 10% of people feel like they don't experience stress during this season. It is actually very, very normal to be going through what you're going through. So just allow yourself to be more conscious about your breath, to slow down and be present and let go of the control that you're trying to have about everything. I personally will be doing quite a lot of traveling at the end of this year. I'll be flying to visit Kevin's family. And then we'll be back in town and traveling down south to visit my family. And I think I have another travel plan immediately after that. So this is what I'm reminding myself as well. That I'm giving myself a permission to really take a step back. Even from podcasting. To rest and to enjoy my time with my loved ones. I may still spend some time to write and create because that is what gives me joy, but I want to do it out of having fun. I don't want to do it while still focusing on growth and metrics and stuff like that. So that is how I'm going to be spending my holiday season. So I guess that is the end of this podcast. And I really want to let you know that it has been an amazing, amazing season with you right here at Small Girl Big Talk. The past 25 episodes has been a dream for me to produce and to share with you as we create this safe space for ourselves in our adulthood journey online. And I honestly am so looking forward to bring you better content and discussion and most importantly, community for our adulthood journey in 2024. It is going to be a year filled with new challenges, growth and experiences for you and I as we continue to focus on our adulthood journey. I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And this is goodbye for now. Bye-bye.